Today I'm going to present this review, patient derived induced pluripotent stem cells in cancer research and precision oncology. It's a perspective review. I have chosen this topic, IPF cell, because I think it's very interesting since these cells have a huge potential in cancer research. So I will give you an overview of the current um, future possibilities that IPS offer for the study of for the study of human cancer. I'm going to divide this talk into four parts. First of all, I'm going to introduce the topic, the IPS, and the progress made since their discovery, focusing on current IPS models of cancer. Next, in relation with cancer research, I will discuss their limitation and technical challenges, application and their differences compared with other patient-derived cancer models. <clears throat> well, first I had to introduce the concept of induced pluripotent stem cells. They are cells derived from somatic cells that acquire that are equivalent to embryonic stem cell because they have two properties. They can be maintained indefinitely in culture in an undifferentiated pluripotent state and they can be directed to differentiate into any cell type of the, the human body. The development of IPS cell was possible thanks to many works that helped to understand the concept of cell fate plasticity. Initially, it was believed that acquisition of cell fate was unidirectional, from a pluripotent and immature to a mature and differentiated cell. That is, uh, development is irreversible. However, a series of landmark experiments revealed that cell fate is flexible and reversible. The first experimental indication of cellular plasticity was reported through somatic cell nuclear transfers, transferring a somatic nucleus into a enucleated egg. This demonstrated that the somatic nucleus maintained all genetic information. Later, the development of embryonic stem cells and their fusion with somatic nucleus also highlight that epigenetic memories could be erased. In addiction, the profile of gene expression in somatic cells can be changed through fusion with other cell types or introducing tissue-specific transcription factors that convert a differentiated cell to other lineage, the, a process known as transdifferentiation, direct cell conversion. Well, to summarize, all these words suggested the existence of reprogramming factors that can change the cellular fate. So, according to all these discoveries, it was suggested that the genes that contributed to the identity of embryonic stem cell could be the reprogramming factors. Because of this, Yamanaka started to work with mouse embryonic stem cell to identify embryonic stem specific genes, referred as embryonic stem associated transcript that are the responsible of their characteristics. They identified these genes and generated a list of 24 candidates as reprogramming factors to investigate if they induce pluripotency. And without going into details, they transduced various different combinations of potential reprogramming factors into mouse embryonic fibroblasts and evaluated the induction of peripotency through their ability to survive to an antibiotic treatment. They introduced each candidate individually and down of all the factors alone supported cell survival. However, using a mixture of, of all 24 candidates, colonies were formed and these colonies resembled those of embryonic stem cells and not the fibroblast, the fibroblast from which they originated. 
Next, they try to narrow down the pool of candidates to a minimal set of reprogramming factors. First, they remove single factors, the be testing combination of 23 factors each, and in a first round they shortened the list to 10 genes and in the next round they found that the elimination of only 4 genes inhibited the colony formation. And when they tested the combination of these 4 genes, now known as Yamanaka factors, the cells generated have embryonic stem cell-like properties and were named induced pluripotent stem cells. During this decade, there have been much progress. After generating mouse IPS, was demonstrated that the Yamanaka factors were also sufficient to generate human IPS cells. And in addition, it was discovered that reprogramming factors have a redundant role, so it's possible the use of differing combination of pluripotent factors. The efficiency of reprogramming is quite low, but other genes have been found which expression facilitate reprogramming and increase its efficiency, and are named as reprogramming enhancers. Also, the methods of reprogramming evolved from using retroviral vector to non-integrating IP zones and RNA-based systems. <coughs> and the cell type that could be reprogrammed quickly expand, expanded. Sorry. It became clear that transcription factor reprogramming is a universal process that potentially works with nearly any cell type. The derivation of IPA cells from primary human cells offers very interesting opportunities for creating disease models. And in the past few years, multiple IPA cell based models of mainly monogenic disease have been created. But however, the potential of IPA cell modeling in cancer research is just beginning to be explored. Cancer research. Really, on, really relies on models to recapitulate the malignant state at the molecular, cellular, tissue, organ or organist, um, organism level. Preclinical cancer research uses mainly immortalized cell lines and mouse models, but there is a low relation rate of basic research findings, so the patient-derived models are increasing in popularity. So far, only a few studies have succeeded at deriving IPS cells from primary malignant or premalignant cells. These are limited to myeloid malignants such as myeloid neoplasia or myelofibrosis. Because malignant cells can be easily obtained from blood or bone marrow aspirate. An IPA cell from patients with this disorder has shown cellular and molecular phenotypes characteristic of the underlying disorder, such as altered differentiation potential, gene expression change, or drug sensitivities. Also, IPA cells from patients with pancreatic adenocarcinoma have been generated IPS-like cells which are cells that need a continuous expression of exogenous reprogramming transcription factors, so they are incompletely reprogrammed. IPS also have been generated from patients with familiar cancer predisposition syndromes, resulting from jet-line mutation. This is an example. However, in this work, the IPS cells are derived from normal cells instead of cancer cells. Actually, the best way to model cancer with IPS is deriving the cells from cancer cell and normal tissue. This way you have paired tumor and normal IPS cells that share the same genetic background, so that they share all your line but no somatic variants. But 11 years after IPS was first generated, why don't we have no, more IPS uh, cell based cancer models? Well, first of all, six some technical challenges and the two most, cru two no most crucial bottlenecks are the efficiency no of malignant cell reprogramming and the ability to differentiate IPS cell into the cell title of interest. 
regarding the efficiency of reprogramming, the exact cell rate of IPO cell line establishment depends on the cancer type. Some cancer united lesion may be incompatible with IPS generation because such lesions may affect pathways that are required for the induction or maintenance of pluripotency. Also, due to reasons related to technical impediments related to the inability to dissociate or induce the growth of the viable cancer cells from a tumor. And to address these problems, it's necessary to optimize protocols for the processing of tumor tissues and to improve cultural conditions. But in addition, circulating tumor cells could provide an alternative more accessible source of cells for reprogramming. Mox experimental application IPA cells need to be differentiated into the cell type that correspond to the cancer of the interest. Most differentiation protocols introduce cocktails of a specific growth factor at defined times and concentrations. One advantage of using IPSL to model cancer is that it's not necessary to generate differentiated functional cells because most cancer arise from tissue specific stem and progenitor cells, so the process is easier and faster. But on the other hand, the evaluation of successful differentiation may be complicated by the fact that cancer often show a broad expression of lineage markers. Some early studies support the idea that IPS might be genetically unstable. However, using next generation sequencing was demonstrated that most variants detected in IPS cell are persistent in the starting somatic cell and the remaining mutations are acquired during expansion in culture or during differentiation at a rate similar to that of normal somatic cells. So it is now clear that the programming is a mutagenic in itself, but these studies evaluated normal IPS and cannot exclude genomic instability as a feature of IPS from cancer cells. Occasionally, incomplete of arborant reprogramming can produce cells with altered epigenomes and functional properties driving to partially reprogrammed IPS cells. IPS like cells that, I, as I have mentioned before, they need a continuous expression of isogenous transcription factors. And we have to keep in mind that they are not suitable for modeling cancer epigenetic because during the programming, epigenetic modification of the starting cancer cell are reset or erased. Well, ne the next point to talk about is the most important application of IPS in cancer research. The possibilities that the IPS cell offer are linked to their properties as pluripotent cells. First, the genome of a single cancer cell can be amplified into an unlimited number of copies and this unlimited expansion can, at least in theory, be achieved without phenotypic drive. Because the pluripotent state is uniform, stable and self-sustaining in vitro. Second, the broad developmental potential offers the opportunity to examine the effect of a specific cancer genotype or a specific driver mutation in different cell types and developmental stage. This way it's possible to address questions like if a specific tissue restricted epigenetic is required for an oncogene to exert its tumorigenic potential or if common or distinct pathways operate downstream of a common oncogene in different tissues. IPS are good candidate for the introduction of precise, precise genetic modification by the CRISPR-Cas9 system or other genome editing tools. A specific gene mutation can be engined into a normal IPS cell or corrected in cancer IPS cell to provide complementary isogenic systems. The CRISPR-Cas9 system can also be used to introduce large-scale genetic mutation 
chromosome like chromosomal deletion, inversion, and translocation that are common in cancer. <coughs> Regarding modeling cancer progression, reprogramming cells from a tumor can generate IPA cells that capture distinct clones at different states of cancer evolution, including dominant and minor clones. Premalin and IPS can be used to interrogate recurrent genetic events required for cancer progression, analyzing copyrighted genetic events that are necessary for develop a cancer. Also, IPS cell models by capturing early cancer state stem and progenitor cell can be used to search the cell of origin of a given cancer. This is investigation of the cancer stem cell concept. Increasingly large collection of IPS cell lines from different genetic backgrounds are capturate, that capturate cancer diversity can be used for many types of studies. For example, to address the influence of the genetic variation in the tumor genetic of a given oncogene and the interplay between genetic background and environmental factors in the malignant process. Also, collection of IPS can be used for drug discovery, the identification and validation of therapeutic targets, drug screening, and, partic and a particular attractive use of IPS in drug development is toxicity testing. Given that it is possible to generate a variety of healthy cells from normal match histogenic IPS, and with advance in regenerative medicine application, tissue and organ regeneration using normal histocompatible IPS cell will be possible for patients with cancer who are in need of tissue replacement therapies. Finally, I am going to mention some advantages that IPS cell have over other patient-derived cancer models versus immortalized, immortalized cell lines, the convolutional cell lines represent fully transformed cancer cells. By contrast, the immortalization of IPS cell is conferred by the induction of pluripotency. This way, it is possible to derivate IPS from cells that are not completely malignant, enabling the capture of premalignant cells cells in early stage of the malignant process and cells with cancer predisposition mutation that had not yet initiated the process of transformation. IPS are independent of the exogenous genes, whereas most cancer cell lines rely on continuous expression of strong exogenous oncogenes that may alter their cellular behavior and gene expression in non-physiological ways. But on the other hand, conventional immortalized cell lines in the future could be derived from cells differentiated from IPS. Another patient derived model is conditionally reprogrammed cells. This method, that is very new and no, really not much use, and I am not going to explain, induce normal or tumor epithelial cells to proliferate indefinitely in, vit in, vit in vitro without transduction of exogenous genes, and these cells acquire some feature of somatic stem cells. Conditionally reprogramming is technically easier than reprogramming to color potency, but it is confined to epithelial tumors and gave rise to polyclonal population. Also, also IPA cells can be combined to or used to produce other more complex patient derived models like 3D organoids or cell transplantation or culture with other cells. <coughs> in conclusion, a new era in preclinical cancer research is emerging in which patient derived models are taking center stage and IPA cell have a promising future thanks to the great opportunities that they offer.